I, I've stressed about doing what God wants, helping people and loving people, and uh, being that that Christian, um, being the person that looks at somebody and looks at who they are, not who they were. You don't look at somebody and go, "Oh, he was an addict," or "You know, he was a drunk." He was abusive. Boy, he's got anger. Um, I, this is an honest to God true story. A girl named Susie said that she couldn't go to a church here. Not this one, but here. Because she's had two abortions. And both abortions were due to medical complications that she felt she had to, to, to not just to, to save her life. And I said, who, who told you you can't go to church because you've done that? And they said, the pastor. And I said, well, that pastor is not worth his salt. Church is exactly where you need to be. You know, don't be judging people. You haven't walked in their shoes. You don't know what they've been through. You haven't been down that rocky road that a lot of people take, that road of, of uncertainty. Um, you know, I, I remember, gosh, man, I remember sitting in prison and it was every night, I, I would just like, man, I hope I die in my sleep. I just want to die in my sleep. This is horrible. You know, and, and people go through those things. They go through adversity and challenges in their life. But the one thing that we have to do is we've, we've got to hold true to the Word of God that God's never going to let us down, that God's always going to be there for us, that God's going to supply what we need. And, and eight weeks of off and on talking about how to make God smile. I can tell you what makes God smile today. God likes loyalty to God. The Bible teaches us that God's a jealous God. God likes to have a covenant with you that each person fulfills. We talked about that Wednesday. for the pe Wednesday night, by the way, was so much fun. Man, Austin was just cracking up like he's Matt Reif. And, you know, we... Just had a blast up here. There were no notes. Um, we just went and got it the way it's supposed to be gotten in church. Um, and I didn't once, not one time on Wednesday night, did I say anything derogatory about T.D. Jakes. He's done enough of that on his own. But I finally realized what made God smile. And after hearing the band in Austin this morning and the outlaws, I proved my point. How many people in here, you know, we, we know we're to obey God. We know we're not supposed to ask Him why. We know that we're supposed to have a covenant with God. We know that we're supposed to lay our burdens at the bottom of the cross. And we know that we're not supposed to dwell about who we were. We're supposed to worry, not worry. We're supposed to actually have a consuming fire within your soul about who you want to be. This new guy, I won't point him out. I want him to look at him. Somebody comes into church today, and I said, what brought you here? And he said, I want to be saved. Brother, you picked the right church. You picked the right church. So, how many people smiled when they heard the, the Austin and the Outlaws this morning? How many people were clapping and praising? Show of hands. How many people were into the mood because... Carissa, you better have raised your hand. Carissa's like this, like the little dinosaur. I got little hands. Here, raise them, Chris, up. That's what makes God smile. Ephesians 5.19, addressing one another psalms and hymns and spiritual singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart. Paul is telling us in this that actually to talk to, to each other by saying things found in psalms for music. Let me tell you something. Do you know who the first ever worship leader was? King David. King David was the very first worship leader of a church because he got out his musical instrument and he sang songs and psalms to an almighty God that made God smile. He won favor with God, not just because of his repentance and pure heart, which you have to do, he won. Here, are you taking my picture? He won favor with God because of his songs, because of his praise, because of his worship. 
Um, go to Chris Tomlin's song, Our God. You could simply say to your brother or sister in Christ, if our God is with us, then what could we what could stand against us? Because we're u- united. This church is a uh, it's a branch of the pastor. The pastor is a branch of the of the music. It's all one. And this congregation is a branch from the pastor, from the music to God. We're all one with God inside of a church regardless of who you were. And and I know a, y'all, a lot of y'all are in uh, um, Alcoholics Anonymous and NA and all this. And God bless you, you should do that. If that's what makes you get your giddy up on the right way, if that makes you do everything, but I've said this a million times, I don't agree with something about that. I just think that if you've had an addiction problem or you've had something kind of else problem, and you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you've been baptized, and you've changed your life, don't stand up in front of another man and say, hey, I'm John, recovering alcoholic. You're just John the Christian that's going to use your testimonial about the grace, love, and mercy of Almighty God to change your life so that you could go help somebody else change their lives. You want a coin? I'll give you one of those coins that Jesus put in the fish's mouth, that God put in the fish's mouth, so they could go buy things with. I'll give you by word, and I'll show you how to get righteous with God, how to, how to get right with God, how to be sanctified with God, and how to be crucified with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on that cross. It doesn't take standing up and going, hey, I was. Brother, no, you wasn't. You're just God's child. And that's the best thing that you can be. Don't look down on yourselves over things. Psalms 104.33 I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have being. This should be daily with us. Except for me. I have to sing in my head. Because if I sing out loud, you will throw up. (laughs) And we don't want the cleanup crew to come into the church because Pastor John made the congregation sick by singing. Yeah, I know. I've told this story before. I'll tell it again. It's about Austin. He came in on Mother's Day three years ago. Three years ago. And he walks in. I didn't know who he was. And by the way, hey, Carter's down in Florida. Pastor and Miss Carter, they'll be back next week, I think. Next week. Round of applause. They'll be back. So he walks in, and he was thinner than he is now, Elena, wasn't he? Yeah, he's, she, said, she said he's had two kids since then. Puts on weight. Well, and, and plus, TV had 10 pounds. You know. Um, I thought he was some guy off GQ magazine. I, I didn't know who he was. And then we started talking, and we had a band at the time. We had a guitar player and some singers and stuff. And uh, we needed a bass player. So I'm like, well, yeah, I can play bass. I'm like, well, come and do it. And I remember Pastor Carter's like, I don't think he Well, he did. And he's never left. He went from a bass player to a backup vocal for a while with guitar because he didn't want to sing. Then he went from, that's right, then he went to lead guitar with Justin singing lead. And now he's the head of Heaven's Outlaws. He's a recording contract with Midwest Outlaw Music. Yeah! Yeah! (laughs) Yeah! But that's how God uses people. Three years ago, he would have cut his arm off before he'd have stood up here and prayed. Is that about right, Austin? Yeah. But now look at him. He comes up here and he's heading the praise worship team. He does the opening prayer. He does the closing prayer most of the time. That's what pleases and makes God smile. Music, the love of music, sincerity from the heart, putting words into lyrics, into music for God. We'll go to Proverbs 25.20. Whoever sings songs to a heavy heart is like one who takes off a garment on a cold day. When you sing and praise God, is anyone that, I love music, man. I, I grew up 
country. I'm, you guys don't know a lot about me. I will admit this one time after I say, I, I really do like Pink Floyd. Um, I actually know Bob Seger personally, so I, I love all his music. Um, I'm a big Pink Floyd fan. I'm a big Eagles fan. Uh, Ozzy Osbourne, uh, you know, I liked NWA and Tupac. I went through the whole thing uh, about it all. And here's what I'll only admit once and never hold this against me. You got to promise me, everybody, raise your hand, you promise me. I actually like Nickelback. So, you know, and, and, I, <laughs> and, and I think that uh, music just touches people. You could be driving down the road and Freebird comes on, man, and it's cheek. You know, it's just automatic volume 30. You know, there's, there's certain things that it does for your soul when you listen to music like Country Boy Can Survive, Hank Jr. Then you get into I Saw the Light and Austin and, and the guys does a heck of a job on that. But it lifts up your spirits. It makes you feel so much better. Music can make you feel like you can conquer the world when you're listening to the right song. Right? Like, play that funky music. Yeah. I told you I wasn't going to sing. But music has a way to, to get a one-on-one -on -one relationship with God because music is a direct prayer as well to God when it's praise and worship music. We're, we're putting out our soul into God. I can remember uh, the story about W.A. Criswell, uh, Criswell College down in, in uh, Dallas, Texas, seminary. Uh, W.A. Criswell started pastoring his uh, first church when he was 17 years old. At the age of 82, I think, it might have been 90, but I think he was 82, he did his last sermon. And uh, he entitled the sermon, Old Time Religion. And W.A. Criswell uh, addressed the audience that night, his congregation, and he said, uh, I remember these words vividly. He said that every time Mitch shows up to church late, we're supposed to stand up and clap for Mitch. Hey, way to go, Mitch. Woo! Glad you could make it. He didn't say that. Yeah, that's right. Cindy says at least he came. Yeah, he you do drive two hours. People that live 30 minutes away, that cat in a cowboy hat drives two hours every Sunday one way. And it has nothing to do with his mom and dad being here. It's all about this. <laughs> but W.A. Criswell did his last sermon called Old Time Religion. And in that sermon the night before, W.A. Criswell said, I opened up the Bible. And I've read that Bible since I was 17 years old. For um, oh, over 70 years, he's been reading that Bible every single night. And he said he opened it up and he turned to a passage and he finally understood what it meant. After 70 years of studying the Bible, he finally understood what it meant. And then he had the congregation do something. I'm going to ask you to do it. Everybody stand up. And this is what touched me about this sermon. And this is what touched millions upon millions. Of, man, there's a lot of people in here. Millions of people that touched it. <clears throat> We're going to sing a song together. Come up here, Austin. <laughs> I can't... <laughs> This is impromptu, by the way. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Give me that old-time religion. Give me that old-time religion. Give me that old-time religion. It's good enough for me. It was good for Paul and Silas. It was good for Paul and Silas. It was good for Paul and Silas. And it's good enough for me. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. It's good enough for me. Thank you, brother. See, we just got God's attention. Even though I had to bring somebody up that could actually sing. Um, actually, we brought two people up that could actually sing better than me. Austin and Abram. Uh, <laughs> But that is what W.A. Criswell's point was that night in 2002, that afternoon. It, it was about learning about God more every single day, regardless of your age. 
and taking sometimes all those years to completely understand what it is that God's trying to, to do in your life, right? And then he ended it by making God smile. And how did he do that? He did it with hymns and song. And that made God smile. Acts 16.20, no, we'll go Hebrews 2.12. Saying, I will tell you of your name to my brothers in the midst of the congregation, I will sing you praise. Now, I'm not holding back on this verse. It says, I'm going to sing my heart out at church with my hands raised up in praise, and I'm going to give glory to God in everything that I do. Because sometimes you could just have the crappiest day you've ever had in your life. I mean, you can just feel like somebody just put you down the toilet, right? But when that one song comes on TV, on YouTube, or on the radio, when that one thing happens, and you remember something about your childhood. You know, I remember all the good music when I was a kid back in the 2000s. And that one, <laughs> that one song comes on, and that dead spirit that's inside you changes to be a joyful spirit. And and you know what? I love praise and worship music. I, I still love Pink Floyd to this day. I think, you know, The Wall was one of the greatest albums ever done. I still love everything Southern rock and roll. Um, but you know, there's something about turning on praise and worship music that just lifts your soul. There's something about hearing about David, King David, and hearing about God and hearing about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. John Barry, a famous country singer, Hall of Famer, Grand Ole Opry guy, he sang a song called Love is a Cross. And back in, I'm going to really age myself now, 20, what, what year did I do the revival with Wade Hayes and John Barry and them? 2014. He, that album just came out, so we were blessed enough that in Wyoming, um, I had Wade Hayes, Buddy Joel, Brian White, and um, John Barry. They all sang, and I preached that day. And it was great. But he started in on Love is a Cross and talking about the bloody hands and the bruises. And <clears throat> you got to listen to that one time, Austin. You could probably do it pretty good justice, you guys. But that song not only made you appreciate what Jesus went through, because he's going in detail in lyric and with music on what Jesus went to. You should listen to that song. It's John Barry, Love is a Cross. And um, I remember listening to him pray or, or say that, sing that, and I got done with my preaching to start it. And then I just sat in the, in the stands with my family and just became a fan and just started listening to these old cats, you know. And it just touched me so much that I had to go back up and preach again um, because it just touched my soul. And sometimes songs do that. They just touch your soul to make you want to be better. And even if you're better for just that three minutes and 30 seconds on average, at least you were better for God for three minutes and 30 seconds on average. Because sooner or later, that three minutes is going to be five minutes, is going to be 10 minutes, is going to be half an hour, it's going to be an hour, and then it's going to be a full day. Now you've got a winning record by pleasing God. Amen? And that's what we try to do up here is get a winning record to try to please God. Acts 16.25 About midnight, Paul and Cyrus were praying and singing hymns to God. And the prisoners were listening to them. Paul and Cyrus were in prison singing loud enough that the prisoners and the guards could hear them. How about a big amen to that? They're sitting with chains and shackles on, and the only thing that they know how to do after they got done praying was to start singing songs and praising God. The circumstance was bleak. It was dim, dark, cold, hungry, bruised, bloodied, and all they wanted to do was sing praise to an almighty God because they knew that's what made God smile, and they knew that God was going to release them. And guess what happened? God released them. 1 Corinthians 14, 15, 16. 
What am I to do? I will pray with my spirit, but I will pray with my mind also. I will sing praise with my spirit, but I will sing with my mind also. He must have had a voice like me. Otherwise, if you give thanks with your spirit, how can, you, how can anyone in the position of an outsider say amen to your thanksgiving when it doesn't know what you're saying? They're trying to say here, even if you have a terrible voice like me, there's nothing wrong with singing in your head. God's going to hear it. Remember, the Bible teaches us if you think it, you've done it. Because God knows our thoughts. God knows everything that we can do. The Bible tells us we can't go anywhere and hide from God. You can't do something in your car that God doesn't know. You can't do something in your bathroom or, or in, a, in a garage or anything else that God doesn't know. He knows it all. God knows if you're humming or singing praise to Him, even if it's in your mind. 1 Corinthians. Psalms 96.1 one. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Just like God doesn't want us to say the same prayer over and over again, don't sing the same song over and over again. Praise Him with different hymns. Praise Him with different music. But praise Him. You want to make the conclusion of this whole eight weeks I've been doing this. You want to make God smile. Honor a covenant. Become His. Accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Do what 2 Corinthians 5.17 says. And be a new creature, a new creation. Once you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, amen? And sing songs to God. Praise and worship Him. That makes God happy. Psalms 51, 15. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. It's an interesting verse because the psalmist is asking God to open his lips. So he can declare your praise. More than likely because it was one of the psalmists in song. <clears throat> and David and all Israel were rejoicing before God and with all their might with song and lyrics and harp and tambourines and cymbals and trumpets. There's your band. Now I've preached and I've quoted David Wilkerson from roughly 20, 2008, something like that. And I hold true to it today. I haven't changed my mind that, that people have turned God's house into a house of entertainment. It's a house of a bunch of hypocrites that want to come in and watch a rock concert and, and watch a big theater play instead of coming in and listening to what the Word of God is all about. You praise God because it's in your heart, body, and soul to praise an almighty God. You don't praise God by putting on an act. That's what I don't like about this thing. I don't like that we turn God's house into a concert. God's house is about everything. It's about the congregation being in the body. It's about the pastor that can do okay. And it's about the music that can praise Him. It has to be all in one. When somebody leaves here, they better be saying these things. The band was good. The preaching was alright. The fellowship was good. Because then that is called a true house of God. And that's what we need. The Lord your God is in your midst, the mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over your gladness. He will quiet you by his love. He will exalt you over his loud singing. I love this verse. Our God loves us. And did you catch the end of that? Did you catch the end of that? He will quiet you by his love. He will exalt you over, exalt over you with loud singing. God sings for us. The Bible says He does. And as I was doing this, I thought, I'm going to throw something in here people probably haven't, doesn't know. Did you know there's a Bible scripture about Jesus singing? Anyone aware of that? Can you flip the scripture? Matthew 26, 30. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. After they ate, Jesus led them in song. Anybody know that? Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, sang a song to praise God. Now, we don't know what song it was. 
I could probably come pretty close. Probably Psalms 112 to 114, something in there. Because that was a standard practice back then after a meal. But I'm telling you, I just showed you verses where God Himself says He'll exalt us with song. And Jesus in Matthew 23, 26.30 tells us, He sung a hymn. How important is music in your life? <clears throat> right? Who in here loves music? Who in here will look at music differently now today? Who in here is going to look at music like it's here to uplift your soul? Who here is going to look at music and think sometime, you know what, that old cat in a cowboy hat up there said, God sang to me. Jesus sang. I'm going to sing back to them. I'm going to give praise to them. I'm going to give worship to them. And remember what I said to start this bad boy up here this morning. King David was the original worship leader. He led his country. He led his nation. And they say he found favor with God. And then it goes back and says he sang with harps, tambourines, and trumpets. He had a band. It was called King David and the Jewels. And they were a godly group. They used to sell out the Roman theater when the lions were done killing people. But we need to think about church. We need to think about everything that's going on in the world. This world's messed up. Look at everything that's happening. There are severe earthquakes. The eclipse is coming. There are signs of the end of times with the world, with the war in, in Israel and Gaza, the war in Ukraine, China, North Korea, and everything else. There are signs that are in Revelation in the Bible indicating not that the time is going to come, that it's already started coming. We need to make God smile. So I ask you today, I'm asking this church, you guys do me a personal favor. Raise your hand if you do me a personal favor. That's everybody except for Carissa. <laughs> Every time you hear Austin and the Outlaws play, stand up and scream with them. Stand up and clap with them. Because God's in this joint. God wants to hear it. So I don't want to hear, see anymore. I want you to play. I want you to sing. I want you to clap. Because they're giving praise to an almighty God that the Bible says sung to us. They're giving praise to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who Matthew 26 says He sung a hymn. So when they get up here and they spend their volunteered time to learn the music, play the music, get signed by Midwest Outlaw Music Group. <laughs> what did I say last time? And to be a good host or to be a good anything, you gotta pull in a you gotta pull in one of those sleazy plugs. That's my sleazy plug. But when they pray and they sing, give it back to them as good as they're giving it to you. Let them know that you hear it. Let them know that it's touching your life. Let them know that they're singing directly, not only to this congregation, to a worldwide audience, and we are worldwide. We've got viewers in Brazil, Turkey, uh, Afghanistan, believe it or not, China, believe it or not, the Philippines. We've got viewers all over the world. They're listening to this little church every week. Let's show those cats what it's all about for now on. How about that? Let's raise our voice in praise. Let's raise our voice in, in worship. And let's preach our butts off. Let's sing our butts off. And let's make God smile. Amen. And if God was here right now, in the loudest voice you've ever done, one, two, three, he'd say, Cowboy up. Cowboy up.